We're here with Mario Donovan from Adventure Trailers. Mario, what is this? This is uh, fiberthane. This is a uh, foam and uh, fiberglass composite. Mm -hmm. It's uh, coated with uh, Linex and it is super light. Weighs a little over a pound per square foot. You can beat it with a hammer, it comes back. It has an insulative quality. It's really nice to work with. It makes stout boxes, trailers. It's used a lot in the boat building industry for bulkheads in, uh, in uh, sailing boats. Mm -hmm. So we started using this for first for composite drawer systems to be used in uh, the backs of vehicles. And is it used in this trailer here? Yes, it's used in our new uh, Trek trailer. Um, the uh, Trek trailer was designed with uh, disabled access in mind and in order to do that you have to have components that are lightweight that somebody in a wheelchair can easily manipulate. Um, with the advent of the, the oil crisis and changes in uh, fuel prices, we also wanted to build something that was lighter weight than a conventional steel trailer. Uh -huh. So we were able to bring this trailer in at about 1,200 pounds, even though it is substantially larger in size than any of the trailers we've ever built before. What would a comparable trailer like this weigh that was built in steel? Oh, it would probably weigh about 2,000 pounds. This trailer looks like a, a pretty significant departure from, from your traditional adventure trailers, from yes. the Horizon and from the Chaser. This is true. Um, this is uh, this is following an Australian concept of a fold open trailer design, and it's similar to a rooftop tent that when you open it up, you double the living space that's inside. However, we have made the uh, the bed the full length of the the trailer, so that when you open it up, you get a full living space. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a problem with rooftop tents when you're in bad weather. You don't have a place to hide out when the weather goes bad. You're stuck inside a small tent. Well, this actually gives you an entire stand-up room area where you can be on the inside. And uh, you can put a couple of tables or chairs or other people could sleep inside here. It's uh, quite roomy. Um, we've also set this up so that we can put in uh, heating systems to keep the, the interior area warm. We're able to put in a full-size, nice, thick mattress, so you've got a, a level of comfort that you don't get in a rooftop tent. Uh, that was one of our goals. We, we listen to our customers, and they always ask, you know, for solutions. Like, what do I do if it's cold and rainy? Where am I going to be? And so we're constantly driving towards, well, how are we going to answer those questions for our clients by, by producing a product that they can use? And this was the next logical step. Uh, this has been in uh, development for about a year now. One of the things that you hear people say a lot is that there's two kinds of vehicles, live-in vehicles and live-around vehicles. Would you say yeah. that this trailer kind of bridges that gap a little bit? Yes, because it's a little bit live-in. Obviously, I'm inside. But then there's also the, the outside part, which is, you know, you have your kitchen galley on the outside. Uh -huh. uh, so that you, it, it almost becomes your patio. On the side of the trailer, we have a... Uh, uh, and access to your water tank. So there's a water tank that's put sub-chassis with a skid plate on it. So it keeps the center of gravity very low on the trailer. Um, and it gives you 19 gallons of water, which is substantial for, uh, for a long-range trip. Then uh, coupled with that, we've put in a SAGIV uh, water blender. So this is a hot and cold uh, water setup. And you just plug the hose in, and that becomes the, uh, the blender control. And then for the hot water side of this uh, trailer design, we use a uh, remote pressure pot. So the, the remote pressure pot uh, is you heat it with water on the stove, and then you connect it with a coupler to the system, and then it blends through this valve. That allows you to use that pressure pot someplace else if you needed to have portable water to move to another location. Mm -hmm. Or if you were in the field and you needed to refill the tank, but you didn't have like a hose access and you needed to portage water back to the trailer, then you could do that and use the pressure pot in the other way. So the idea was to keep this design flexible enough for an overland traveler who may not have the amenities of pulling up to a hose someplace. Mm -hmm. um, for a uh, outside sink and table, uh, we uh, fell upon the uh, uh, Thule Smart RV products in Europe last year. And uh, these use the little pods that hang on the side of the, the uh, trailer. Mm -hmm. And uh, essentially, the table has a hook that just hooks onto it. So when you're traveling, you take this off and put it away. But when you get in the camp, you 
click it on and you're good to go. You've got a nice work surface. It's at a good height. And uh, the, the height can be changed for, for the disabled. We can lower the height of this table so it's uh, more accessible for someone in a wheelchair. Well, the, uh, the kitchen uses a partner steel stove, which we've used historically on all the adventure trailers. It's a very high quality stove, high pressure burner. Uh, we tried to make this a simple access for, for the user. Uh, the stove simply closes up and you don't have a lot of setup, you just way it goes. Very quick and easy. The, uh, the fridge is contained in this box. This is a prototype box, but the uh, production box will actually slide all the way out with the stove and then the fridge pushes out this way. And the idea was to keep the fridge lower for the disabled. Uh, we've also made some design changes in our can carriers uh, to also reduce weight. Our can carriers were very popular, but because they were stout, they also weighed 19 pounds. Mm -hmm. We redesigned them and switched to using anodized aluminum. Now they weigh six and a half pounds. That's a pretty big drop. It is a huge drop, and our focus has been on reducing the weight because our belief is that vehicle engine sizes are going to reduce, mm -hmm. uh, and the oil companies are already planning for that. Uh, reduced fuel consumption in the U.S. So following suit, we're reducing weight so these smaller vehicles can tow these trailers. What's in the front box? The front box is where we put our uh, power systems. So if you were to look at the side of this, you can see you have some 12 volt access outlets and then you also have a shore charger inlet so you can attach a, an extension cord to this uh, for 110 uh, input. Uh, if you were traveling elsewhere in the world and you needed 220, we have access to chargers for that as well. Inside we install the uh, batteries and uh, you have some additional storage area. In this case we have extension cords sitting in here and uh, some wheel chocks. And back a little bit on the trailer. Over here we have uh, this white box here. What's in that? Okay, this uh, white. This is a uh, underbed compartment, and this is a, actually a marine hatch. So the seal. This compartment goes all the way through to the other side. That's, so that's huge. it is huge. The, the idea of making one long compartment was so that if you had long items that you needed to store, you can slide them in. So this is 60 inches long, uh -huh. but you can access it also from the other side. Uh, there are all, also options if someone wanted a uh, slide-out system in here, we could add that, uh, depending on the need. Mm -hmm. And uh, from, so, so you have, this is the bed level, so underneath this entire bed, if you measured up all of the storage area in this trailer, there's 54 cubic feet of storage area. That's substantial. That's as much as what's in a horizon. But you also have this huge tent and bed and all of those other things. What's the price range? Because I know there's obviously a lot of different ways that can be built, a lot of different options. There's a lot of different ways to option the trailer, and, and uh, we use an a la carte method for, for options. But the way that this trailer stands here, it's, it's going to be somewhere in the sixteen dollars to $18,000 range. Do they come in any other colors? Yes, actually, this is Linex brand material. And what's interesting about Linex brand is they have a process where you can actually match a vehicle color. Mm -hmm. And it's a two-stage process where they use an under undercoat layer, which is the base layer. Let's say if you had a red vehicle, they would spray a red Linex. And then they would spray a second layer that has an actual blend of paint tint base in it and a UV protectant. And so it'll match the vehicle. So you, have, you could do all kinds of things. You could two-tone it. We could spray the panels different colors because there's multiple panels. So mm -hmm. it could be stylized. No are doubt. you aware of any other trailers in the US market that are really built around the needs of disabled people? I don't know of any. And I, and I think that's why we decided to approach it. We've, we felt that if we designed from the ground up for the disabled, then it would work for anyone. Mm 